three miles of charge, three times one extra charge. Okay. So no net charge. That's the essence of the formula. That whenever you write a formula out, it must represent no net charge. The total positive charge must add up to the total negative charge. So there is no net charge in the formula. If you write a formula of a compound, you end up with a net charge, there's something wrong with that formula. Okay. So that's something that you want to pay, pay attention to. And talking about the ionic compound, there are certain, ionic compounds share certain types of properties. They are all solid at room temperature, no exception. And they all have very high melting point and boiling point. Sodium chloride is an example. You have to, if you try to melt sodium chloride solids in the crystal, you have to raise the temperature all the way up to 800 degrees Celsius. And if you have to, if you want to boil that melted sodium chloride there, you have to raise the temperature even higher, 1413 degrees Celsius. Okay. If you can dissolve an ionic compound in water, that solution will conduct electricity. We call it electrolytes. The reason for that is because when you dissolve ionic compounds in water, you have charged ions moving freely within the water solution. You have positively charged ions, sodium, calcium, or aluminum. You have negatively charged ions, chloride. Yeah. And when you have free moving charged ions there, the solution will conduct electricity. So these are the general properties of all ionic compounds. So we will see this particular slide again later on when we get into chapter seven, chapter eight, and talking about in comparison between the ionic compound and molecular compound, we will review this, these properties again. Okay. So talking about the charges for in ionic compounds there, talking about the charges for more atomic ions there, this particular uh, picture shows the charges that can be uh, that uh, each of the elements that can bear. Okay. So here, group 1A, one positive charge. Group 2A, two positive charges. Group 3A, aluminum belongs to group 3A, three positive charge. Okay. So this is when we, we can actually predict, make predictions about the um, monatomic ions and the charges on the monatomic ions. If it's a main group element, then for the metal elements, the main group elements, the uh, metal elements, the charge equals to the group number. For the non-metal elements there, Going from 7A backwards to the left, 7A will bear one negative charge, 6A, two negative charge, 5A, three negative charge. So one, two, and three. Going from right, uh, left to right, positive one, positive two, positive three. So what happens to you for a element there? Well, it's not a clear cut situation. It depends on for the group 4A elements, or even for group 5A and 6A elements there. Non-metals can also react with one another. Okay? So in general, when metals react with non-metals there, non-metals will bear an active charge. But when non-metals react with non-metals, when they combine together, it depends on who has a stronger ability to donate electron, who has a stronger ability to take in electron. So even though we say group 5A, uh, the elements will bear three negative charge. And that's in the group 5A elements combined with metal elements. But if group 5A elements combine with group 7A elements, for example, okay, then group 5A elements will actually give out electrons. And group 7A will take in electrons. The reason behind that is about the periodic property of elements there. So for now, we just need you to, I hate to ask you to memorize things without understanding why, but we will get to the, re to the why part later on in chapter 7. So for the charges on mono atomic ions there, and this is the table that you need to pay attention to. And uh, so for the metal elements and non-metal elements there, the one thing that you need to keep in mind is that metal elements will bear positive charge. Non-metal will bear negative charge. And going from 7A backward to the left side, negative one, negative two, negative three. And even here, we can make a generalization, negative four, but we know that these situations, the carbon is not always negative four, sometimes it can be positive four. Now one thing that we left out is group 8A, the noble gas elements. They do not like to interact with others. So they, when we talk about the charges there, we leave them out. And normally they would not undergo chemical reaction. They would not 
either give or take electrons from others there. So when we're talking about the chemical reactivity, we're talking about the elements in group 1A all the way through group 7A, including all the uh, transition metal groups there. Okay? So talking about the metal ions there, we already mentioned this. The, for group 1A, 2A, 3A, those are the main group metal elements there. They count the N, N equals to the group number. The number of charge, or the positive charge, equals to the group number. So this is very important. If you have an element, you know it's group 1A. You know how many electrons they're going to give out. They're only going to give out one electron. If you have an element that belongs to group 2A, they're only going to give out two electrons. We will, again, in chapter 8, and when we talk about the periodic property, we're looking at the energy aspect of it, and we'll determine, we'll explain why they only give out one electron or two electrons. Because by giving out the second electron for group 1A elements, by giving out the second electron, it will take tremendous amount of energy. And that's just not uh, realistic uh, for group 1A elements. There. So it's not happening. Yeah. For group 2A, first two electrons doesn't take much energy. And when you try to touch the third electron, it takes tremendous amount of energy. So they cannot uh, use too, too much energy in order to remove the third electron, uh, therefore, they are, that's just not going to happen in nature. So that's, what, that's the reasoning behind it. And we'll get into the details about that reasoning a little bit later there. So for now, main group elements, group number equals to the charge. For the anion charges there, group 7A, negative 1. Group 6A, negative 2. 5A, negative 3. So that's something that we want to memorize for now. And uh, we want you to be able to write out formulas for ionic compounds as well as molecular compounds, we need you to know the nomenclature. And talking about nomenclature, that's going to be the chapter 3 topic here. But for ionic compounds there, and one thing to remember is that ionic compound, the formula representing a particular ionic compound will have to have no net charge. So that means the number of total positive charges must equal to the number of negative charges. The examples that I gave you here, positive 1, positive 1. Calcium is group 2A elements, positive 2. So you have to take two chlorine, group 7A elements there, negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 2, positive 2, no net charge. Positive 3, negative 3, no net charge. So when you finish writing the chemistry word, when you finish the spelling, you have to check the spelling. The way to check the spelling is to, write, is to look at the charges there. Okay. You have the formula has to represent no net charge. If you end up with a net, net, net uh, if you end up with a net charge, and there's something wrong, something is wrong with that formula there. Okay. So when you write the formula for ionic compounds, knowing given the periodic given the periodic table there, knowing where each element belongs, we need you to be able to write out the formula. So we gave you the alphabet already. Now we need you to spell. What's the formula going to be for potassium chloride? Well, you look at potassium. Potassium is going in group 1A. One positive charge. Chlorine is in group 7A. One negative charge. So the formula for potassium chloride would be KCl. Okay. One positive charge. One negative charge. What about barium chloride? 